happening people what's happening Let's welcome go. back to the brothers geek out podcast another episode of two brothers geeking out about what's happening in the pop culture world and in real world issues as well if you want to hear it um, as usual guys check out the description if you don't want to hear us talk about our lives if you don't want to hear us our, our opinions and thoughts on the real world issues and stuff check the description it will be the first thing there i would say geek out news or it would say geek out news starting from here you click on it it takes you straight to the geek out news uh, and then, as always, man, I'm joined by my bro, Kibbs. What's happening? <clears throat> How's it going, guys? Hope you guys are well. Uh, as well as can be. Uh, loads going on. Trying to keep myself. It's got busier. And Laura's at age, uh, Nia's at age now, so it's getting a bit uh, full on. So it's trying to manage everything, which is it's not always easy, but we're, we're getting by. So but other than that, like, you know, juggling work, this and... Um, Everything else that you got to do in life, responsibilities, chores, it's 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 uh it's full on. Uh and I'm starting to feel run down again. So my body's I don't know what it is. Training has helped, but then like now my body we've been feeling funny, everybody's been ill in the house again, people are on holiday, every anything that she caught from school, like Alara caught from school, we're catching it now as well. So it's like a uh, constant everyone's ill in the house at the moment now. So always uh a downer on it at the moment but other than that there's always other things working in the background which kind of level the good with the bad the good with the bad but yeah all the all good bro all, all kind of good bro i know there's a lot going on on your side my god i'm tired man i'm tired so yeah, yeah. it's been a crazy crazy week uh to just start off with the the, the plot line i guess me and the missus today alhamdulillah we bought an apartment um so alhamdulillah it all happened today but my god has it it, it's been crazy it's been a crazy week mm. so last like, we knew we wanted to possibly buy hair anyway but we were thinking our rent hair finishes in october 2025 let's wait till early next year but we would like we all already like let's set out a goal to just see a couple of places Riyadh, as you know lives here who's an old friend of ours and he's an estate agent so we were like well, listen bro if you ever have any places doesn't matter what the value is just let us know and we'll come see it just to kind of get out there so yeah. anyway Last Friday, we are in our favorite neighborhood, Town Square. We're there every Friday, and we knew if we buy, we're going to buy from there, right? Um, hmm. We're like, you know what? Let's just go to the estate agent, right? Let's check it out, right? And we both said, look, the service in Dubai is basic, so we're expecting it to be shit, but let's just see what they got. So we walked in, bro. We met this guy, Ahmad. Super nice guy, bro. Super nice guy. He literally spent an hour with us. Like, So the service was beyond amazing he went through so much details and he basically told us that there's a new build coming in 2026 show me a price plan and mm -hmm. whatnot if it works so throughout the whole week bro whole week from last friday today's thursday so it's been six days he's been sending all the information i became like a mathematical genius freaking finance dude doing all the math seeing what works out basically from mine and my wife's perspective i was like listen if we do something like this I want to be financially comfortable. I want to live the life that we're living mm. now, meaning going to restaurants, booking tickets to come home, whatever we want to do now, but then have that on the side, right? I don't want to put us in any financial difficulties. So anyway, I become like a mathematician. I start doing other maths. And based on the, the, the cost of the place, it worked out perfect, right? And it's like a payment plan, right? You, it's not mm. good right now. The mortgage will happen in two years or yeah, on the handover, but you basically pay 10% every couple months, every like six months, right? To which I can make work and be financially comfortable. So anyway, the whole week, man, we're talking to Ahmad and me and the missus, like we're, we're selling it to us. We're like, man, this, this sounds good. Like we should do, we ask you a lot of opinion um everyone's opinion talk to loads of people thinking about all the pros and cons anyway the one thing in our head mm. is that one we're moving so quick right um it, it, it that's a bit nerve-wracking we're moving so quick and two one second but i need to change my wi-fi i didn't realize it's still connected to yeah that. hopefully that's right. me off one second is it connected still is it connected still yeah yeah Okay, cool. So we're just thinking, look, listen, everything sounds amazing. Price point works. Oh, Ahmad is giving us all the details, being a lot of good communication, giving us great customer service considering it's Dubai, right? Uh, I've, yeah. And, bro, we're, the only thing is, it's like it's happening so quick and I still don't, I, I don't trust anyone here, right? Even though he's a nice guy. Mm. Anyway, yesterday, we had to make a decision today because today is the day that they pull out in the market, right? 
So what happened was um, last night we we were gonna call Ahmed and make the decision with him, right? But I've been talking mm. to Riyadh on the side, right? Riyadh's my boy. I I always told him I want to go through you, knowing Dubai services and two, you being my boy, I want to go through you. So anyway, mum, I spoke to mum and she's like, listen, you know, like if you guys think it's the right decision, go for mm. it. Do a a, a two rock up prayer, right? And just ask God for guidance. Why right? just ask God for yeah. guidance? But I finished gym. I went upstairs to the prayer room. I done my prayers. I done that extra two rakat. And I asked God, just guide us through this. Let us know if you're the right decision. I really pull it out yeah. there. But I'm driving home. Again, the intention is to go home with Elia, get to Elia, and then call Ahmad to say, let's do it. Right? Real estate guy, nice guy, all communication, but I just don't know him. Man, on the way home, Riyad calls me. He's like, gee, I just thought to the developers, man, I could get this one for you. You could go through me. And I'm like, you serious? Like, yeah. I'm like, bro, that's the sign from Allah, man. That is the sign. I prayed to Allah, the two rakat, to say, guide me. That's Allah saying to me, go for it. And here's your boy who you trust, who's going to take you through it. Bro, so since then, we went for it. This morning, Riyadh was there early. Bro, my day's been crazy. I've been on course. First day is my busiest day. I've been on course since 10 a.m. I, hmm. I woke up 7 a.m. to wash the car. I'm all through this stuff. But as the calls are going on, Riyadh's calling me. There's all these WhatsApp messages. I put Elia on it as well. She's communicating. All this sort of stuff, right? And then one, but I'm in my calls. I told Elia, go for it. As long as we're in this price plan, as long as you're happy with the layout, all that stuff, let's go for it. But I just, I just mm. see one of the messages saying, it's booked, boy, it's booked. You guys got it. And I'm I'm doing this call. I haven't even seen Elia. I, mean, I, mean, I got a couple of hours calls after back to back. So I can't even get mm. a chance to see her. And then literally about, say, an hour and a half ago, I finally saw her and I was like, what the hell just happened? We just bought a place. Like, what the hell? Like, she even sent you lot a message before I even saw yeah. her um, saying that we got the place. And I was just like, wow, what a, what a day, man. What a day. So, yeah, man, we bought an apartment. It's going to be ready 2026. We've, you know, signed a couple of contracts and stuff already, given a little down payment. Um, and, yeah, we'll start on this payment plan from next week. And yeah, man, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Just the way God guides, man, be it you're religious or not, whoever's listening, but like from just from our perspective, the way God just guided me, the way God just gave me the answer and made me feel comfortable going through it with my friend, which came in last minute. That's just God's answer, say like, go for it. Here's your friend uh, to guide you through it. And um, mm. alhamdulillah, man, I can't believe that, man. I can't believe that we... The last six, but listen, man, I I, I want to take, I, I'm trying to tell my wife, we need to take a moment to reflect, man. The last mm. six, the last, you know what? The last two years, even maybe three years, man, like alhamdulillah, man, like I met my wife. We got married twice, one in London, one in Singapore. We moved to Dubai. We set up a home here. We bought a car. And now we just bought an apartment. I'm like, man, we're moving places, man. Me and you together, like, we're moving places. Alhamdulillah, it has been amazing. And that's just God being there all the, all the way, guiding me. And and we, we we just put in the work in. And it's crazy, bro. I'm freaking tired. I'm sleepy. I haven't been sleeping well this whole week because of my usual sleep issues. But mm. what a week, man. What a week. What a day. And, man, this week I'm just going to celebrate. I want. I think I want to go to Black Tap and get a nice big milkshake. Which I did. I have a game, bro. But another yeah. one, because Mark Pope was in town, if you remember. Yes, him. yes. Yeah, yes, yes. So How's he doing? Good? He's doing good, man. Usual guy, man. Usual guy. But uh, jolly guy, cheesy jokes, drinking beer. That's all he does. Love. It's good to see him. I'm glad he reached out. It was nice to see him. And we, we're just going to celebrate this weekend, man. Just get some nice food. We're going to do it today, but today's Thursday. So it's like, all right, keep the diet today. Tomorrow having a game man you're gonna enjoy it but make sure you do man congratulations it's, it's always hard it's never it's never easy process as you said sleepless nights and when you already suffer sleepless nights and then just trying to find that guidance is always hard like i'm not good with stuff like that i'm i i find it really difficult bro so like you know even for when we got this place ages ago man it was hard 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 work man hard work and then after with everything else that happened the fire the, the works the people that you try and deal with to try and get stuff done it's a mental ball ache bro but it's worth it and and i think it's yeah of course what so much is 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 you got home there now you know yeah alhamdulillah. i mean bro like what you said like 
this is the first time I've had to deal with it. Because when I got the house in Tottenham uh, 15 mm. years ago, to be honest with you, dad went through all the process. I was just in the mm. background with the with the money and looking to pay the mortgage. So dad, would, this was me. And I'm like, man, foreign country. I know Dubai services, basically. I was just so nervous. I'm like, this is the biggest financial investment we're going to make out here. I'm so nervous. But the fact that, you know, Allah answered my prayers and said, look, here's Riyadh. Here's your friend. He's going to help you through it which is what I wanted from the beginning. I just didn't know Riyadh can cover this. I didn't know he can call a developer and make it happen. I thought he was stuck in yeah. his own complex, but no, it happened. And yeah, man, I'm, we got a place here. Listen, whatever happens, happens. If we ever have to come back to London or whatever we can do, I can keep it as an investment or I can pull it up for resale. Like there's so many opportunities. Exactly, like, yeah. Okay, if, you know, if we do stay here, we got a place to stay. It's not our, to be, to be honest, it's not our dream place because we wanted a, a villa, but we what we realised, we can't afford that right now. But at least it's in something and, you know, it's an investment. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I don't have to worry it's about important. interest or nothing like that because it's like a payment plan. And, um, man, it's... That's insane. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's been crazy. Bro, I, it's crazy. I own a house in Dubai. Like, I, I own an apartment in Dubai. This is crazy. Life is, alhamdulillah, man. That's what I've been saying all day, man. Alhamdulillah. No, no, of course, man. Of course. I, I was telling, I was actually reminding somebody yesterday about the privileges we have. Yeah, it's a blessing. Honestly, it's a blessing. And, and, and it's not easy. It's always hard work. It's always been hard work. Uh, but privilege, privilege. Uh, so much going on in the world you just got to appreciate the things that you do get you know what i mean some people we don't have that so it's uh always good to see hard work pay off so honestly privilege alhamdulillah man really good yeah. things really good alhamdulillah. things alhamdulillah cool yeah, man well look exactly. we we got a short time uh today yeah. cool. so let's get straight into we don't have a long list but we have a couple of things we want to talk about as usual uh let's start off with the the first thing as always um real world issues uh and again three palestine um, there's been some updates and whatnot. Um, not that I'm giving you the news, but there wasn't. Listen again, Mark Lamont Hill's YouTube channel. Check it out. He gives a daily update on the news. The what the real what what the corporate media, what the Western media don't cover. He gives that daily news of everything. So check Mark Lamont Hill's YouTube channel. Twenty minute clips. Even check my Facebook. I share it every day on my Facebook. Um, and then I just listened to another Pierce Morgan uh, debate between the the legend. I don't know if you like, if I want to call him the legend, but just an amazing dude, uh, Norman Finkelstein, just so much knowledge and facts and calm and collective. And he was going up against a, uh, a Zionist um, troll, a guy called Rabbi Smoley, which, I listen, I can't judge anyone. Allah will judge him, but he ain't no real rabbi, man. Like, I think, again, this this is this typical Zionist thing where he's they're, they're hijacking the uh, the Jewish religion. That's what they're doing, man. They're hijacking that. So anyway, watch that debate. Norman Finkelstein is just cool and calm and just destroys him from a factual perspective. And this rabbi, all he does is just, all he does is just try to get Norman Finkelstein. Like he gets on him and he's tried to, tried to get on his like, uh, what do you call it? He just just tries to disrespect him as a person. And normal thinking scene is like, what well, the discussions is about Gaza. So I'm just gonna stick to the topic and go, like, on yeah, yeah, yeah. like you literally you have no facts about the situation so you're just going to try and dump on him which is just pointless so he's dumping on Norman Finkelstein and Norman Finkelstein is just like yeah whatever like I I, I have this feeling of I want to um, honour myself and honour my defend my honour and whatnot but no the topic of discussion here is about the people of Palestine and the war crimes and whatnot. so anyway amazing debate check it out uh, unfortunately as usual the US vetoed another ceasefire I don't know how you veto babies getting killed like, like oh no, let's veto it let's let's let babies there's a killed. different agenda bro it's they're so gonna keep this going so they disgusting. have something yeah it's horrendous it's horrendous even yesterday parliament house of parliaments is a joke bro our government is a joke and anybody in that sort of job who tries to justify anything like it's difficult because you have to vote for somebody because it gives you some certain rights sometimes but i'm not gonna vote no more bro mean i'm not gonna vote no more they they encourage us to do things but they're not for us it's not for us that's for one percenters and the people that make billions and trillions it's not for us uh and even if we have a different party 
you know, now we've got the, the these these Tory CUNTs and you know moving into Labour, whoever else. To be honest, I've I've lost track of it now, and I'm not gonna vote no more. I'm gonna stop voting because they don't make no change, bro. These people go on and carry on and talk all the talk. There it has not been no change. All you've done is made it worse for people. In in the UK anyway. For the everyday person, it's it, it's insane. But every day, we are the people that run this country, you know. I read it's something. all of our money that's invested. Yeah, I read something recently that the UK has officially gone into recession. Yeah, it's a I small mean, one, they're saying, but who wouldn't, bro? Because we can't afford anything. I mean, it's crazy. I have to think about electric or food, bro. Yeah, it's, who, it's the... Who has to I mean, come I, to that point? And the crazy thing is they they're fucking up their own country and their own people and then they're also blowing up Yemen and Palestine, letting that happen too. Like they, they, and that's just, our tax. That's our tax money. That's our tax exactly. Rather than spending it that's back our on tax the, money, yeah. The country, they they're using it to blow up babies, fucking bastards. It's it's weird as you get older and you, you learn more about the reality you're in. Bro. And the things around you. You're like it's literally F first. And like I would fight politicians, bro. Who oh, wouldn't? Man. Who wouldn't? I would fight you, man. I I I would fight you. I don't know how some people keep calm. You know, some people are all for the you know the democracy of whatever. Ain't no democracy. Have it. That's some bullshit. Not no democracy. Sorry, like some, you know, like lie. no, they say it is, but that's a lie. It's not a yeah. lie. It's and they try to say, oh, Russia and China, they're communist party. Listen. You say it's a democracy. It ain't no fucking democracy. You control shit. It's a com communist world as well. Um, yeah, no, bastards, man. Sons of bitches. And it's, it's just the way it is, man. Listen, I... I you know what? Listen, uh, uh, just more on, on, on Palestine. There was in the, IC, the ICJ, I think in the ICJ courts, I think it was 120... No, 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 56 countries or something were this week had been making a case on or making a hearing about Israel's occupation on Palestine. And I listened to the uh, the Palestinian, I, I can't remember his position, but man, it was emotional. Man, it, it was very emotional. And I just don't understand how, like one, I, I know these courts, like the fact is, right, even if these courts make some sort of suggestions, Israel don't follow it. And the only reason why not is because the US and the Fi and I think it was the Fijis, like some random islands, and then the UK is involved, allows them to do it. But the whole world is basically calling for the Palestinian state. It's basically calling for a ceasefire, all that sort of stuff. But that's been happening this week as well. And then I think the hearing for the genocide thing is, is it might be today, you know? So I don't know, I gotta keep an eye on it. But I tell you something, right? Every morning, like I, like I say, I'm so invested in this, in, in the sense of like, I just want to know what's happening. Mark Lamont Hill's YouTube channel, 20 minute clips almost every day. You just listen to him talk and he gives you the update, man, like the real update of what's happening there. Uh, again, every day, war crimes are being committed. It's being videoed on TikTok and whatnot. The ICJ in South Africa, they use all those videos. And since that day, they've still been doing some. Now, they need to hopefully, you know, they get they get uh, the genocide case on them. They need to. I know the US is the only one that's going to try and back them up and some other Western countries. But nah, man, th there's a reason why there's courts. There's a reason why we're supposed to be civilized because of these courts. I know these barbarians who think um, they're civilized, but no, the Western uh, Zionist movement is, uh, they are the most violent people on the planet. Let's not get it twisted. Don't try and say any other region is the most violent people on the planet are the Western Zionist movement. They love to blow up people, but the real humanity is the real civilized people. They actually use the courts and try and take this legally rather than try and start world wars. But the Western Zionist movement really want the wars. That's why they're blowing up people. That's why they're vetoing ceasefires. Um, but hopefully they put the genocide case on them because they deserve that. They they hundred percent deserve that. And regardless of what happened, not regardless, but one thing that's happening for sure: the whole world, except the U.S. What some people in the U.S. like I say, politicians and shit. Some in the U.K. and like some Fiji colonized islands are against Israel. The whole world. So they lost. They lost their reputation uh, if they ever had one in one state, and they have. They have shown the world that, that they are murderous, genocidal, disgusting people. Again, not the innocent 
Israeli people. I'm talking about the government, the terrorist government state and the terrorist IDF uh, group. They have shown themselves to be the true terrorists in the world, not the innocent children and, and innocent people there, because there are, like I say, millions of them. So, you know, you know, God, God protect them. And of course, our Jewish brothers and sisters, the real Jewish brothers and sisters. Again, it's, it's a shame that your religion has been hijacked by these terrorists. But we've been there. We've been there. They mm. tried to they done it to not. They tried to do it to us, too, with ISIS or whatnot. We know exactly how you feel. But their religion has been has been hijacked. And we need to make that clear to our Jewish brothers and sisters are not involved in this shit. It's got nothing to do with them. It's all the Zionist movement. So. Yeah. Man, free Palestine, free, free Palestine, guys, free Palestine. Uh, we've got donation links in our social media pages. Go check it out. And thank you so much for the people that have donated. You guys are absolutely amazing. It's heartbreaking that it's still happening. Like now, this is still it's still a thing. Uh, there's been thousands. We've had 14 marches at the moment now for ceasefire. They had one the other day. People have been out there. I I, I send respect to my 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 fellow. Uh, human race out there doing the bits to try and help like what's happened bro is insanely crazy and there's a future where we have to speak about this to our kids when they're older and how this stuff happened and then trying to how do you even put politics into that because you're going to be like our government didn't do nothing they're, they're not humanitarians they are all about business and how much money works that yet yeah, they're still bombing all these other countries Porous countries, countries that they've put in that situation, but due to all of the issues that they cause and stealing resources and colonization. And we're still, we still, we still in that, but they're doing it in a what's the word, bro? A 2024 fashion. This stuff is always happening behind in the background. So systematic issues that we've struggled for years is still happening guys and maybe not in our faces but it's always happening in the background does not matter what you think we have a veil that's been pulled over our eyes and as the disgusting alara i mean nia what are you doing you silly girl what is sorry she vomit put my sandal in her mouth man ah, ah silly girl silly girl i know it's all right also, baby let her be she's not been well um uh, but Look, as I was going to say, guys, yeah, it's uh, yeah. Uh, well, I didn't finish off, but what I was going to say was a famous blade, uh, saying there's two quotes that I love from that movie. You know, uh, the first one is hold up, I've already forgotten the the, the main one, which kind of links to this. Let me find it. Uh, uh, blade quote, sunshine. The world ain't sunshine and rainbows or something like that. <laughs> is that the one? I feel like it's from Rocky, but it might be. No, uh, bro. There's there's one part. Remember with the uh, the nurse and Wilson says it. Not oh, Wilson. West Whistler Whistler as well. Wilson. No, Whistler doesn't say it. it he, he. Uh, come on, man. Uh, uh, blade movie. I need to find it, man. It's gonna bother me if I don't get it. Uh, shh. COVID. I have to find it. It's going to bother me. Anyway, the other one was some of my motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill, and that's our government. Uh, but what Blade says to Karen is, you better wake up. The world you live in is just a sugar-coated topping. There's another world beneath it, the real world, and you want to survive it because you got to learn to pull the trigger. I love that land. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. <laughs> that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That is so true. It's it is so it is, true it is. because this world is actually full of these fucking vampires and goblins and zombies and fucking werewolves and shit. I know these are all fictional characters, but no, they're real in these. They're real. They're real. They're real. They're real. They're real. They're real. Yeah. They're real. Yeah. Those are people in government. Those are the the the, the they they're the ones, bro. They're the vampires. They're the demons, bro. I'm telling you. Oh. And all right, cool. Let's let's continue. Uh, I haven't. Sorry, guys. Yeah. This one's gonna be a bit of a, a short, short one, one, but yeah. yeah. But guys, in. donate and all that sort of stuff, and speak. Just keep speaking out. Cool. Free, free Palestine. Palestine. Let's move on to the next segment, which is uh, what we have watched, and Hello, I guys. watched Look, something awesome. Here. And I think we're gonna do a, a therapy session on this. I got a chance to watch Iron Claw, which was amazing. Oh, oh my god, wow, bro. 
that last scene and spoiler alert. Oh, I mean, oh, keep, keep keep going, keep going. Yeah, if you know the story, who's the story of brother? What they call it? What they call it again? The the Bon Eric brothers. The Bon Eric brothers, the wrestling, yeah. for, the, the uh, pro wrestling family. Last, I'm spoiling it, but obviously the story's right there. That last scene with Zac Efron, his character sitting there and he's watching his children play, and all his brothers are dead. And he just, he's crying and he tells his children that I used to be a brother. Oh my God, that fucking killed me, man. That killed me, man. That hurt so much. And the thing is, I, I know about the story, but I didn't research into it. So I knew bad stuff was going to happen, but I didn't expect all of them to die. And then my missus was doing the research and she goes, there's a lot more missing. There was another brother who died. There was another brother, was yeah, that's right. When he was younger, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so many other brothers had kids and whatnot. But the fact that all of them died, bro, it killed me, man. I was so emotional, man. I was so sad. And obviously we're very close as brothers. We This is the Brothers Geek Out podcast. So there's a lot of uh, emotions there, but just, Je what a story, man. What a, a curse. They said they said it's a curse uh, themselves, but what man, that was that was hard, man. That was a hard one. When that last scene was too much, man. I used to be a brother. He had five brothers, all of them, one by one, wow. just Bro, I, going. So lucky. So I'm glad you guys have all watched it and we do a therapy session. I think that that's a, without a doubt, definitely. Yeah. Probably one of the best movies that came out last year. I know it's come out in the UK now and other countries now. Surprised this hasn't got no uh, nominees for any type of awards, BAFTAs and uh, Oscars and stuff, because Zac Efron absolutely smashed it. But it's not even at the cost in itself. Uh, the hardships of what a father can put down onto their children and be so, so cold, bro. So cold. Uh, but there was two scenes in that movie that, so the first one, the first scene, bro, when what's his name? Uh, one of the brothers commits suicide, and he's on the boat, and then his brothers are waving at him, and I was like, "What's going on?" And mm. it was just the brothers reuniting. That that got me. And they met their, you know, some of them haven't met their eldest brother who died when he was younger. Yes, yeah. And they 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 introduced him to him. I was like, oh, Ted, Ted, Ted. And I was with Aaron when I watched this. When we watched this back in November, and he knew it was gonna hit me, bro. That moment, Zach Efron was crying there, and, and and said those lines. Instantly, butters cry, bro. Like you know when you're trying to hold it in, and you're like, huh, huh, huh. <laughs> he can hear me breathing. Bro. I was like, this is not stopping me. You know, we came out of the cinema. I was still bawling, bro. He was like, you're okay? I was like, bro, like, how can... I mean, that's part of the story. You know, the family went through so much more, bro. Mm. But they showed us the most tragic part of the, these brothers and the hardships they went through because of a father's dream, which is so hard, bro. How crazy is that? A father's dream. And that's just how harsh she was and how... Man... And, and he, they, no one, not even the wife, was allowed to show any emotions. Tears were weakness. And he just, he, the brothers, their brothers are dying. The, the mother's children are dying. His children are dying. But no, you can't show, shed any tears. That's weakness. I'm like, this is, this is, listen, man, as a father, yes, I get it. Discipline, but there's, there's a, that just went overboard. But obviously, that's what they're trying to express. And that's what, unfortunately, was the tragedy of that family. Um, it was, I just couldn't believe it because, like I said, I knew bad shit was going to happen, but I didn't know anything. I didn't research on it. And I'm like, what? Another one? Like, what? And, 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 and it's anticipating the next brother. And you're like, what? He's the only one left? What the fuck, man? I, I, but that film killed me. That film killed me. Zach F1, I have to say, though, amazing. I told my, I, I, my missus, she was watching it. Obviously, he's jacked. His face is all changed. I'm like, yeah, Zach F1. She's like, what? She knows it from High School Musical. And she was like, no, that's not him. I'm like, yes, man. And then she went and researched it and checked. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, that's he's a, he's amazing. But how far has he come from High School Musical? Bro, I'm not saying bro. High School Musical is shit. But I'm just saying it's not the type of thing that I would watch. But his progression as an actor to this, oh, fucking fantastic. Fantastic. And he was jacked. He was jacked. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Fuck I, I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh couldn't think of anybody else better to play that role now and i think he's earned that respect as an actor i think he's done the you know he's he's had his whole life in hollywood career bro that's all he knows is 
is that so what how do you better yourself in what you do and he's done some actually really good films in between bro then he did a couple of comedy to, with with seth rogan uh uh i can't remember bad neighbors i think bad neighbors is that in, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah which you know cool. he did the the, the Bay Bay movie with the rock uh, but he's done some other movies in between. But this is a uh, showcase killer. And I'm actually shocked that he's not getting an award for this. Or even just the script and the direction of this movie. Because from the beginning, it captures you. Iron Claw, bro. Feel that pressure, bro. Uh, great movie. Great movie. Yeah. yeah and I was explaining to my missus as well. Like, with pro wrestling, it's scripted. But the movements are real. I'm not and listen, you don't you're not getting full contact punch. You're not it's not like MMA and whatnot, but you're I, I've said this before, you're slamming your body, you're getting suplex and you're slamming your body on a canvas, on a table, whatever they do freaking a hundred times and then next week you're doing it all over again they're just addicted to painkillers, they're addicted to opioids, they're addicted to everything, man. It's but I think pro wrestling is dangerous bro i would never consider doing anything like that i think it's worse than mma in my opinion mma like i say yes it's dangerous but you're training you're training for a fight yes training can be tough as well uh and whatnot but the fight happens okay cool but you're taking three months off after that right you're taking mm. time off after that with wwe man you're not taking no time off man or pro wrestling it's the next week two shows a week whatever for, for 365 days of the year you're traveling new time zone Bro, well, man, th those athletes, they deserve all the respect because they're literally putting their bodies on the line for entertainment. So people out there who think it's fake, yes, it's scripted, but the pain that they put themselves through is ridiculous, man. All respect to them. Uh, the movie is fantastic. It's fantastic. Mm. Listen, I, 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 of course, go research on the real family, but if you want to get a good perspective that I think, I don't know what the family thinks or what he thinks, sorry, uh, since most of the family's passed away, but um, it hits hard, man. It hits, it, it hits really hard. It's such a great, it's a great, like, story about that family. No, so, definitely, it is, bro. Amazing. Definitely. So, guys, keep an eye out. Therapy sessions coming out with three of us brothers talking about the Iron Claw. The Iron Come Claw. On, Check that out. Right, anything else you watch? Anything else you want to touch on that you watched? Or... Uh, let's go through my memory. Look, I'm watching a TV program called The Good Doctor. I remember seeing clips online. I'm really enjoying it, bro. It's about this autistic uh, doctor named Sean Murphy. And, you know, his struggles of integration into the, the, the work force and society itself and how they see autistic people, how they see disabled people and trying to it's, it's, bro, it's brilliant. I love it. Uh, the other day, there was, an, there was an episode, how, crying. I was like, what am I crying for? But it's the reality we live in. And I think now that we're more world worry about stuff like that, um, it just hits harder now. We're parents now. We're uncles. We're aunties now. So we have a bloodline there, which which would touch us even more now. Uh, and then we, me, me and Ash, we, we caught the multimedia screening of June's thanks to the Warner Brothers UK guys. Uh, June 2, June part 2, June part 2, bro, second time around, in the neck breakers hour, like this. Oh, I know. Two and a half hours. Oh. Fucking moist. Fucking moist. It's I'm... packed. Uh, it's packed, but it's, bro, it's so moist. Like, I I love that, man. I love what Denise does. It's just, I'm listening to, I've been listening to the same soundtrack since this morning. Hans Zimmer is amazing what he does. Greg Frazier, his director of photography, is amazing. Uh, you probably read my review online as well. Like, it's movie making at its best, but this is a movie to, like, transcend through generations, bro. But, yeah, that's 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 what I've seen so far. All right, also, I was just about to... I'm just checking the cinema to see if it's out next week here. Um, Bob Marley's out, so I might watch that. Let's see if this if this this week... That is also, oh no, that's this week. I might go cinema and watch Bob Marley this week. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Well, listen, I'm going to watch that next week. And then once I watch it, I, we can talk about it and give a review on it as well. Uh, but yeah. I'm very much looking forward to, to doing two. So awesome. All right. Well, look, let's move on to what we have read. Just real quick. I've read issue three of The Punisher. I got my comic. Um, oh, on that, like hopefully there's a special edition coming up on Speedy Comics I uh, and their vote. And I met, I met. Uh, brother Rashid who owns it and whatnot and he owns like million dollar comics and whatnot great collector so hopefully I can get that happen I've got to send him an email and whatnot anyway saying that I got my issue three of Punisher 
um, Joel Garrison's Punisher and whatnot. Just carries on from what's happening. Uh, listen, in the day, I'm still giving him a chance. Nothing can take you away from Frank because I'm still reading uh, the uh, the uh, the other one I'm reading, um, the F Punisher Max one. Frank's story and the story we have behind Frank and his what he's gone through is 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 different. With Joe Garrison, you're still trying to get to know him. Uh, there was a moment in this in this in this issue three where um, there was this character I can't remember her name like Fair or something like that. I can't remember, but almost like Scarecrow. They make she makes you see your your um, your fear and what you're scared of and all that sort of stuff. And this in this in this issue, Joe Garrison comes and kind of comes out and realizes what. He um what I think it's something that he fears that people don't speak up. You know, what I mean, when shit goes down, when something happens in the streets or in, in society, there's no one there to stand up for people, and that's what he fears. I, I think I'm kind of butchering the story a little bit or his perspective a little bit, but it's that, and he doesn't want that to happen. And he kind of comes out of his, I guess he kind of embraces more of the punisher because like these people need to be punished because they get away mm. with shit and nobody speak up so it was kind of like that listen nothing it was still learning more about him i still i still got questions on why he decided to take on the punisher mantle i don't know if they're going to talk about that but that's what my main things is but it, it's pretty you know it's the punisher but it's not frank so i i will accept it for what it is but nothing beats frank stormy stormy um so far uh, but anyway, I will keep giving my reviews on that because I, again, and I will carry on watching it, reading it, just to give, um, you know, just to give it a chance. I have to give it a chance, but he's not Frank. But still, Joe Garrison done it, he's doing his shit and he's punishing the people that need to be punished. Um, all right, that was it. Or, did you read anything? Anything on your side you read? Uh, no, I haven't. The only other thing I did watch the other day is Harry Potter Goblet of Fire. Uh, and I'm actually enjoying it. it. Shit got deep in that one. The the resurrection of fucking Voldemort, bro. It was deep, bros. Uh, I think I spoke about this on last week's episode. Did I? You might have. I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't keep up with the Harry Potter movie. I've never seen them, so I don't know which one you talked about last week. Or, or... so you haven't seen them either. I seen none of them. No, I tried uh, one you day. To... I watched 15 minutes of the first one. I'm like, yeah, I'm. I'm I'll pass. So, yeah. It gets better, bro. You okay. gotta invest. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Same thing. I, I found it really hard at first because it's a bit childish and it's not like you know the the, the fantasy we used to but it's a wizard world and uh you know one and two got hard watches three i was like holy shit this is good and then four like peaked it bro and i was like all right i'm i'm into the the world of hogwarts all right okay but yeah okay. that's, I mean... that's what i watch yeah I don't know if I could if I could promise to uh, commit my time to it, but we'll see. All right. Well, look, uh, I'm going to rush through some news and then we'll spend a bit of time on retro movie review this week. So first of all, MCU, Henry Cavill has signed with Marvel on an undisclosed role. Now, everyone's throwing out their Captain Britain, but you know what? He would be fantastic as Captain Britain. I do think he should be Centurion, just being Superman, like just being Marvel Superman. That's what I do think, but I don't know if he's going to do that. But hey, listen, like, I'll love be honest, dude. bro. Listen, I love Henry as it is. Uh, Captain Britain's a bit on the nose to, to play that character because he is British. Uh, Centurion would be great. That would be a massive F you to the, mm -hmm. the, the guys at WB and uh, Warner Brothers. Uh, sorry, WB and DC. Uh, Cyclops, I all Cyclops. They could well come on, give me, give me Cyclops. Yeah, you oh. know what? I can see that. Give him Cyclops, give him Cyclops. He'd, he'd be cool, he'd be good as Cyclops. I can see him as Cyclops. He doesn't have to be because with the X Men, it's like a uh, it's a team dynamic, so we won't have to get so much of one character. Because when they did the original X Men movie, it was based on Wolverine where now they can base it on each of these characters and really well, whether they do the TV show or whether they actually go into the movie world. But Henry Cavell for Cyclops, I can see that. I'm going to make a picture. Let's put it together, man. Uh, but yeah, I think because he's he's already played the the, the character, the Superman, that the, the OG of all heroes, I think it's going to be very difficult for him to come into a different universe and play such a big character. I'd like him to be like a little side B character. And I think that's where Cyclops fits in really well. But he could play, there's many characters he could play, bro. You think Cyclops is a side B character? I I, I think No, he... listen, he's, he's mainstream, but he's not 
yeah, the main, the say. main mutant. No, I get you. I get you. When you think about yeah, mutants, it's hard. He's a good leader. You're thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. yeah. no that makes he's sense. He's still there, man. He's he's one of the greatest mutants. I mean, my guy's optical blast is from a fucking other universe, bro. And his and eyes blast from a blast. What do you call it? Optic rays from a different universe. That's insane, bro. Is it? I didn't know that. I didn't know that was the extent of his um, optic blast. It's not just an optic blast, bro. That's coming from a different universe. Bro. God damn. His eyes are the keys to a different dimension, bro. Ah, I didn't know this. Would, would you, I, I, obviously, I didn't read all the comics and his and, and stories about him. I didn't know that. Yeah, bro. His optic blast, his eyes are the, 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 the gateway to a different universe, bro. It's sick, bro. The optic blast is from a different universe, bro. So it's sick. It's sick. It's sick. I, yeah. have, I think, listen, there's, I, I think it, regardless of what you do, like give them a long form role and really commit to it. And that'll be an F mm. to DC to be like, all right, well, you got rid of him. We'll take him and we'll make something big out of him because Marvel has the potential, potential. Um, but this year, you know, it's great that Marvel's coming off the MCU. You just got X-Men, you got Deadpool. Um, so that should be awesome. The other thing I saw about Marvel was, um, and I hope this is true, a new Scarlet Witch movie, and I've been talking about this. She's one of the best female lead characters or female, you know, Avengers and mutants, whatever it is. And I was pissed off that they killed her and they keep pushing this all this other agenda with these, all these other female superheroes, which is just not working out. You had the best one there and you built her up from Avengers Age of Ultron. Give us her. So if this is mm. true, perfect. It's perfect. Uh, and And don't push it as a female thing no she she's she, you don't even think of her as any of that sort of stuff just give us scarlet witch she's gone through a lot of trauma put a story there and that's it you're good to go so that's i i hope that's true um okay that was all i had on the mcu on the dc studios it's kind of related to real world issues but i found we found out recently basam yusuf was cut from superman because of his pro-palestine um uh, views uh, of pro-humanity views. Fuck that, I'm not even going to say Palestine. It's, it is Palestine, of course, but pro-humanity's views. Because he doesn't want innocent people to die, because he doesn't want innocent children and babies to die, they, they cut him from Superman. Now, Bassam was very honourable, uh, as he is as a person. He put out a statement saying that, hey, guys, I love James Gunn, all the love for him, me and him have a great relationship. They changed the script. That's what he says. They changed the script. That was in it. Coincidentally, the timing is as he spoke out, but that's how we pull it because that's the person he is. Mad honor to him. To the rest of the world, they cut him because he had pro humanity views, which is disgusting. It don't make no sense to me. But just put it out there. That's unfortunate. Um, that's unfortunate news. Okay. Uh, quick, quick, quick. Moving on to other movie news. Uh, Johnny English fans, Ron at Rowan Atkinson is uh, gearing up to shoot his fourth adventure in the series. So if you if you I, I don't I've seen one nothing of those, but he's awesome, Mr. Bean. I'm sorry, I know his other stuff, but Mr. Bean is awesome. Um, that's all I had, you know, and all, all other news. Um, real quick, video games. So a lot of Xbox exclusive games. Uh, one of them, what I'm excited about, but there's a few other ones, right? But Gears of War has always been the Xbox games. Apparently, they're coming out on the PlayStation. So I don't know if they made a deal um, or what it is, but I think it's great when it comes out in multi-platforms because the developers can sell it, you know, on, on you know, sell more copies or whatnot, distribute the game. So that's something on that. And then lastly, let's finish off. Let's finish off because I know you've got a call and whatnot. Retro movie reviews. And this week, we got a classic, man. Golden Child. The Golden Child, 1986. Eddie Murphy. Classic movie. Amazing movie. Fun movie. Funny as hell. Well, talk about diverse equity inclusion. This is where in, in the 80s, they done it perfect and no one ever spoke about it. Now, I know Eddie Murphy was a superstar at that time because he had War and Delirious and all that stuff. But you had a male black man lead and you had a badass female tibetan chick who was the second uh second uh, would you call it a uh, co-star or whatnot who was just busting up bare people and there's no talk like back then there was not none of this diverse equity or whatnot but fucking fantastic but the movie is fantastic it's just jokes and amazing and she's badass and she's and i'm like this is this is a perfect 
diverse equity and inclusion mo uh, movie. I think the problem is, is because we made such a thing out of it, that's why we get so much shit. But if you let people really like do movies like that naturally, you get wicked movies. Bro, I yeah. from the beginning, I'm laughing at chunky asses, bro. <laughs> that part killed me. <laughs> My guy's looking at, bro, it, the free that cracks me up is he's he's looking at this chunky asses magazine in the middle of the street. Eddie Murphy's right behind him talking about some mud, but or something. And then <laughs> the way the guy puts a paper down and he's like, chunky asses, bro. <laughs> he's so, bro, Eddie Murphy was the best back then in the 80s, man. Um, he was, he was definitely, without a doubt. He, uh, there's a joy to this film, man. There's a joy, and there's a joy to those films back in the eighties and nineties. I was actually, I'm speaking to the guys that all, all on the board, which I've met through some of the screenings that we've done, and I put up a picture of the prop store that's in the UK. They're selling the Krull, uh Star. I love that movie, bro. No matter what, it wasn't a critically acclaimed movie. It flopped in the cinemas, and it, it had a massive budget. It had young Liam Neeson in it, but that movie and that soundtrack, James Horner's soundtrack, is insanely good. So I'm gonna get them on the episode hopefully soon. But we were talking about those movies had something special because they had something tangible there, bro. I swear. So that that blood, sweat, and tears, and getting them visuals done, and uh, brother Numse, man, you know. Well, he's perfect he's perfect bro yeah perfect evil dude man but a perfect evil evil dude like i said character characters in the movie also eddie murphy cracked me up throughout the whole movie right this is what i'm saying this is when eddie murphy was in his prime listen 80s movie so they said a lot of shit there that you're not allowed to say now unfortunately i don't know if it's unfortunate or what but it's just funny that scene where you know the uh the tibetan woman and by the way the golden child she's a female just so everyone knows yes. we always yeah. thought it was a boy and then we find out it's like it's a, it's a female um that scene where the Tibetan girl's uh, father, who's like the priest of the main thing, and you know when he's like, ah, 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 wanted that, bro, these things, that scene was joke, but before that, the guy robs him, right? The man puts the wrong chain on him and all that, robs him for his money. Yeah, yeah. And the way Eddie Murphy was crying the whole time, right? Because I never noticed it when I was young, I guess, right? But he's crying from the moment he gets robbed. He's in the market, and I'm gonna see your ass, I'm gonna bust your ass. And then he goes to the next scene, they're in the middle of some fucking lake, rowing the boat, and he's still crying. When I see you, I'm gonna <laughs> roll your ass. And I'm, I'm like, that's me. Paddle your ass. Paddle your ass. Paddle your ass. Paddle your ass. Uh, listen, bro, there are some great things on there. There's a thing that me and our, our nephew got ongoing, which is he teases his grandparents with the, uh, I'm at the butcher now. Oh my God. No. <laughs> You know, he's like, yeah, it's going to be about six, seven, but I'm going to be late for the party. And it's like, I'm in Tibetan, like that. That's not even Tibetan, but. <laughs> but what, still... about, what about the other scene on the plane? First of all, I can't believe Barbara, it. Barbara, McGuinness in there, McGuinness. Oh, my God. Like the food. <gasps> Bro, on the plane, 18-hour flight, whatever it is, people are smoking. <gasps> Bro. Most, so yeah, bro, scene. yeah, <laughs> it is so much, bro. So much scenes it's in that fun. movie. Uh, and, and you know what? Again, watching it so many years later, and as an adult rather than a kid, like you understand a bit more. They were trying to make this kid, this kid's got superhuman, like su a, a supreme <laughs> beam, there's all this supernatural stuff in it. They were trying to, I always wondered why they're trying to feed him blood, you know, in the porridge or whatnot. <laughs> I mean, again, I, I watched it and it's like, oh, okay, the real bl blood will make him human so they can kill him. Um, and then the dagger was there, but all of that sort of stuff, man. Um, <laughs> It just it just cracked me up. Even when he was like when he was going to get the dagger and he goes, Oh, there's a flaw in here, there's a flaw. And the way his face goes, like you know, he always had a an yeah. amazing smile. And he's like, There's no flaw in here, boy. <laughs> he cracked me up. Eddie Murphy. You know when he grabs the knife and he's like, ah, yeah. ah and he screamed. Uh there was uh, another particular scene and it's gone right out of my head now. I got another one. There's so many scenes from this movie. Remember when uh, he's trying to get the dagger through the airport and he's like, I'm not going to get it. So he puts it in the other uh, American's jacket and whatever. And he acts to be so. But when he was shaking the Nepalese police officer's hands, their facial expressions were cracking me up, man. They were just stern faces and shit. The last guy was smiling. I mean, you got to see it to really understand the, the, the joke behind it. And Eddie Murphy just... Oh, it's just bro, everything about this movie is jokes, man. I I their, their faces crack me up. 
Uh, Shanti Dagger. I love that movie. No, great movie. Great soundtrack as well. Though. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. The 80s. With that, that, another great soundtrack. Another great movie that I could put on and just re- really enjoy as well. Uh, man, those movies, man, they've got something special, bro. It's not even like... I don't know. It's hard to explain. They, they've got this wonderful magic to these films that we still enjoy them to this day. And I suppose that's what it was like for like... For dad, when he talks about when we listen to hip hop, he was like, "What sort of what sort of durum durum you listening to?" You know what I mean? Where he's, you know, and the same thing for movies for him as well. Uh, but that's it for me. You know, it's like there's nothing that would take that magic away of the stuff that we got in the eighties, bro. They 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 have lasted forever for us. You know what I mean? And look, how many times we've we seen Golden Child, bro? Oh my god! I've seen plenty of times, bro. When we were kids, we saw loads of times, man. And even watching as an adult, I was like, "Oh man, why wasn't I scared?" That last part when Brother Noom said turns into a demon, I'm like, "That's kind of scary, bro, man. Shit, like that is very scary, man." Um, man. And then you got, you know, obviously his demonic friends, the one that looks like a monkey, the other one that's like, bro, it's it's just scary, bro. I'm like, what well, the one that looks like Yakub? Is that is he in that one as well? Is Yakub in that one? No. Maybe there's a chunky version of him though. The the one with the beard and thing. There was there is someone with so, a beard, yeah. Bro, hold up. I'm but not I don't I don't think I don't think it's the same dude as the one that looks like Yakub. I think it's a different guy. I'm gonna check the I'm gonna check the let me check the IMDBs for the cast man. Uh the golden jar. Golden jar. Almost sounds like the Big Trouble in Little China sort of soundtrack. Like, you know, those sort of mm-hmm. soundtracks back then always yeah, yeah. kind of had a similar sort of theme to it, but just gets you into the movie. Uh, James Hong is in this movie. I completely forgot. James Hong as... Yeah, it, David Lopez. Where? And Egg Shen. They were in the same movie. That, Egg, his name's Egg there. Shen. Dr. Yeah. Hong. Egg Shen is, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yes, yeah. He played course. the doctor, isn't it? In, yeah. in, when they go downstairs with the with the lady with the the dragon tail or whatnot, and of course yes. Shen was in it. That's the guy who 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 robbed him um, and what. Yeah, yeah, bro. Anyway, I I, yeah. I don't think he was in it, but anyway, Yakub, he was in there anyway. And the other part, the other part, of course, it's good to keep the yang up. <laughs> My yang's doing fine. <laughs> that, that was another. One. <laughs> that was another scene. <laughs> No, nah, great film. Oh, great, 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 great film. Man. Oh, my God. Uh, good good choice this week. That was a good choice. Um, let's talk about the next choice. I'll watch it this weekend. I, I know you got a call in two minutes, man. So, guys, look, I will, uh, thank you, guys. I like, appreciate all the love. Uh, we're going to call it there. Show some love and subscribe and press like and whatnot. And, Kibbs, I'll hand it over you, to you to take us out, bro. Yeah, bro. Listen, uh, guys, massive thank you on the support of the channel. I know sometimes I sound like I'm on a downer. I ain't. It's just a lot on and I'm still doing it, guys. That's the main thing. Uh, even though we've got Ati on the team now, she helps out. But there are some screenings that we are going to. Uh, and we always want to thank you for the support of the channel. You guys are absolutely amazing. You guys show so much love. Socials, man. You guys kill it. We get some lovely messages. Uh, and, and it's great to inspire other people that are starting stuff like this as well in the creative field. You could do it. You just have to do it. Look, we're still doing it now. We may be not even at a level where we could be doing it better, but we're still doing it because we want to do it. You know, I got an email yesterday from somebody and they were like, man, you got 201 episodes. I'm like, bro, you don't even know, man. If you followed us properly, 400 episodes. This is the 400th episode. Celebrations, guys. Oh, shit, it Four, is. Four, 400. Celebrations. Damn. We hit 400. That's just the Brothers Geek Out podcast weekly updates. We probably got another 100 episodes of guests that we've had on the show. Mm-hmm. So listen, massive, massive thank you, guys. Make sure you check out the channel. We've got a, a Geek Out session with Adil. That's on. And then we have a new one coming out this week with Wolver Steve. We talk about Deadpool and X-Men. Uh, but as always, grateful. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, we'll catch you up on the next show. Peace. Peace.